This tutorial is going to cover how to make a swoosh in Adobe Illustrator, and this tutorial is actually quite a bit different than some of the other tutorials I've done in the past, as it's going to rely a whole lot on your eye and kind of making smart choices of how the swoosh is going to fit in the type, as well as to a much lesser extent your own drawing ability. So in my layers palette here, if you don't have your layers palette open, make sure you do that, and that's under window and then layers, it's right around the middle. You can see I have three different layers open. One's called type, one's called outline, and one's called swoosh. So you can go ahead and make those new layers. The create new layer button's right here. It looks like a page being turned. And on type, I have the font already typed out to say swoosh. Type it out to be whatever you want. The font is called Lobster. It's a free font. It's a very cool font that works really well for swooshes. So I'll place a link in the description for you to go ahead and download that. And then I locked this layer because I don't want to accidentally select it when I'm actually drawing. To lock the layer, just to the right of this eyeball right here. It's normally blank, but if you click it, a lock will appear, and that just means if I try to select the type, I can't do that. Then my second layer, outline, currently has nothing in it, but it is not locked, and that's what we're gonna do next. So on the fill and stroke here, I've selected a stroke color that's a pretty light blue, and I'm selecting a light blue because later on, we're gonna draw over this again with a black, and we want to be able to distinguish the black from the actual outline here, so that's why I picked a nice light blue. You can pick any light color, that's just fine. And I'm actually gonna be using a drawing tablet to do this. This first step. You don't need a drawing tablet, but it will make life a little bit easier as drawing fluid shapes with an actual mouse can be a bit of a pain sometimes. And I'm actually using a very cheap drawing tablet called a Wacom Bamboo. I don't know if they even sell them anymore, but when I bought it like four years ago, it was around $80 or something like that. If you want to buy a nice cheap tablet now, I'd really recommend checking out Monoprice. They have pretty darn nice ones that are actually better than the Bamboo I'm using for around $50. So I'll link that in the description as well. But anyways, the first thing we want to do is make sure we have the stroke on a nice light color, have the actual fit right here nothing you don't want to fill in there at all to remove the fill you just hit this box right here that says none it looks like a white square with a red line through it just make sure you don't have a fill and just have a stroke my stroke weight is 0.5 point and that's under window and then stroke right here near the bottom and this is kind of what the stroke weight looks like so you want it to be roughly that much in comparison to the type just so you can kind of see what you're doing when you're doing it but I tend to start at the back when I'm drawing a swoosh and apologies in advance if my lines look pretty bad my pen tablet is in a really weird spot because my microphone is where normally I would be drawing but I tend to start at the back and draw the tail end of the swoosh and when you're drawing a swoosh you have to really think about how the actual type looks and then try to draw something that makes sense for the overall weight of the lines. Lobster is a pretty thick font, so I'm going to use a pretty thick swoosh. You might want to go ahead and reference some pictures of swooshes when you're doing this, just to get some visual reference, but I've drawn more swooshes in the past week than I want to think about. So I'm just going to go ahead and start here. I start at the tail end, and then kind of go up, and then back down. And then as I begin to hit the end of the word here, I slowly arch back up and around like this. So basically, the top of the actual swoosh will end up intersecting the bottom of the letter on the last letter right here. And then at the beginning of the letter here, I tend to draw a nice little rounded arc. And I don't care if these lines look pretty bad. We're going to clean this up later. I just want to get the overall general feeling of the swoosh done. And next, we're going to actually draw the point that goes up and around and then connects to the top of this letter. So I'm going to do that very quickly right here. I tend to just go up and then slowly make the actual swoosh a little bit smaller. And then as I get to this point right around here, I tend to keep the swoosh looking pretty small. The actual thickness of this line, I tend to keep it smaller. I'm trying to do a decent enough job right here. I'm not too concerned if the lines are straight. We're going to clean that up later. And actually, this is an okay starting point. Sometimes I'll actually just go over again, though. And I want to just maybe make this arch over this way more and then have this line be a little bit thicker at the bottom here. So then I can go ahead and just choose which one of these I want to trace over in the next step. I actually like this one down here a little bit better. So I'll probably end up using this new one we drew. If I wanted to, I could go in there and delete this all together so we just have this new swoosh. But this is just a rough starting point. And next we're going to use the pen tool and actually go over this and make it look good because this is a bit of a mess. But this is just a rough sketch and that's why we're doing it. So on the layers palette, now under outline, I'm going to lock it once again by hitting just to the right of this eyeball. A lock will appear when you do that. And then I'm going to select the swoosh layer and uncheck this lock mark. I didn't have to lock that since there wasn't anything there before, but just have the swoosh one open and lock down the outline on its own layer and type on its own layer. And I'm going to use the pen tool, which is right here on your toolbar. It's P as a keyboard shortcut by default. Under stroke, I'm going to change the color to black by just moving it down there. Hit OK. And once again, make sure fill has no stroke to it. And I'm going to keep the stroke weight at 0.5. You should keep it at whatever it is you want the actual stroke thickness to be. If you don't see these additional options under stroke, just hit this down arrow with these lines. 
So for example, if this is all you see, just hit this down arrow with the three lines in the upper right hand corner and hit show options. That'll show these extended options. Under cap, you just want to select the one that says round cap in the middle. It just tends to look a little bit better for this. So I'm going to start at the back here and just hit a point. And I'm not going to cover an in-depth tutorial of how to make actual line art using the pen tool inside Adobe Illustrator. I've covered that in the past in a different video, so I'll go ahead and link that in the description. And I'm just going to increase the stroke of this a little bit so that it looks a little bit more in line with what I drew previously. Now I'm going to trace over my steps that we did before with the rough sketch, but this time I'm just taking a little bit more time to make sure that it looks slightly better. At the end here, we can go ahead and go in and clean up all these, but for right now, this will be good enough. So I'm just going to close off that point and now I'm going to draw the bottom section right here just trying to keep a nice interesting look going on and you don't have to follow your sketch lines exactly I almost never do they're really there is a nice idea of what you want the overall finished product to look like so I'm just going to be finishing this up right here I'm going to actually thin this out just a little bit more and it's also just fine to zoom in quite a bit more and actually get a good look at what you're doing up close. When I'm inside Illustrator, I tend to zoom in quite a bit so I can get a really nice close view of what I'm actually working on. When you're done here, just hit the point you did previously so the little circle appears. It'll close that shape and then hit V on your keyboard and click off of it to deselect it. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the visibility of this outline layer by clicking on this eyeball. So now we can see the actual swoosh here. It actually looks pretty darn good. It's pretty close to being done, but I actually want to make sure it looks nice and clean. And I want to clean up some of these rough edges. So with the selection tool selected, which is V as a keyboard shortcut by default, I'm just going to highlight over our newly drawn swoosh here. I'm going to click on the fill, which has nothing. And I'm going to hit this button right here for color, which is going to fill it in with black. If it's not filled in with black by default, just double click on the fill, select black. You can just go in the lower left hand bottom corner here to select black and hit OK. And you can make this whatever color you want. I'm just using black since it's nice and bold, easy to show in a video. But I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and actually select this again. And I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to select the brush shortcut. And now the really easy way to clean up some of these rough edges, for example, this corner right here isn't perfect. You can tell that it has a little divot in it that I actually don't want in my final artwork. And the easiest way you can clean it up is using the Smooth tool. The Smooth tool is an absolutely amazing tool in Adobe Illustrator. And to use it, just select your brush tool. And then on a PC, hold Alt. And on a Mac, hold Option. So in a quick burst, I'm going to draw over this little line right here. So I just click, hold, let go. And you can tell it does a really nice job of smoothing that corner out. So I tend to just do that over all my corners that I think might look a little bit wonky. I spend that little bit of time just making sure these overall edges look a little bit better. I'm gonna go to this corner right here. The smooth tool isn't great if you have a very small edge like this one. You can tell the curve on this one looks a little bit weird in comparison to the rest of it. So I'm gonna select this, use a little pointer tool and just kind of clean this edge up so it looks a little bit smoother. Once again, if you don't know how to do this stuff, I will link a pen tool tutorial that'll cover that more in depth. I'm gonna assume you know how to do this at this point. I'm gonna clean up this edge at the bottom here too. Same problem, this curve just looks a little bit strange. So I'm gonna use this pointer here, clean this up, pull this edge out just a tiny little bit by selecting on that end point. Zoom back out so we can actually see what we've done here. And there you have it, a pretty darn good looking swoosh. And once you get used to doing these, these are actually really quick to draw. I'm gonna thin out this corner here just a tiny bit since it looks a little bit fatter than the rest of the line work does. I'm gonna zoom back out here. And now we're at the final point here where we can do the finalizing steps to make this really look great. So I'm going to unlock the type layer here. So just the swoosh and the type layer are unlocked. I'm gonna use a selection tool. Remember that's V as a keyboard shortcut by default. It looks like a black arrow. And I'm gonna highlight over both of these. So the type and the swoosh we just drew is selected. And now I'm gonna hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and just drag this down till it's below here and then let go. And then you can let go of Alt or Option. Holding down Alt or Option just duplicates whatever you're working on. It's a fast way to work. Now I'm gonna select just the swoosh we drew. Don't select the type, just the swoosh. And I'm gonna go to Object, Expand. Make sure Fill and Stroke are selected and then hit OK. And that just makes it so the stroke is no longer a live stroke. It's actually something we can merge down. So this is just one simple object. In the Pathfinder window, which is Window, and then Pathfinder, it's near the middle here. You're going to want to go to Shape Modes. We're going to be using Unite. But first, we want to click on our type, right click, and then hit Create Outlines. So now this is also a nice, flat, easily editable thing. So now I'm going to highlight over both our swoosh and the type. And in Shape Modes, I'm going to hit Unite. It looks like two boxes overlapping. It should be in the upper left-hand corner. And this combines the swoosh and the type together. So now we're almost done here, and we just want to clean up this edge right here at the bottom. As you can tell, this looks okay, but it doesn't look perfect. These little edges don't look like a nice smooth transition. And a nice smooth transition here is what can make these look really great instead of just being average. So if I highlight over this, and I'm going to hit B on my keyboard for the brush, 
and we're going to use the smooth tool again. And I also have a tutorial going over the smooth tool slightly more in depth. If you want to learn a bit more, I will also link that in the description. But I'm going to hold on Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, and in quick bursts, I'm just going to quickly smooth over these edges and try to get this looking a little bit better. This one's taking a little bit more time here. I must keep doing this until it actually smooths out slightly better. But if I click off of it, you can now tell that these transitions look much smoother. They look a lot better. If you want to, you can zoom in and actually clean it up more using the direct selection tool. Like I'll make this just a little bit less right here so this smooths a little bit better. But this looks pretty darn good. So that's really it for how to draw a swoosh. It's a lot of practice and actually figuring out how to draw these lines in a way that makes sense with the type you're working on. If you're using a nice thick font like this, a really big swoosh tends to work well. If you're using a very thin script font, a nice thin swoosh might work better. That's really up to you. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. But that's it. So if this video was helpful to you, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I do my best to release videos like this every week. Thanks for watching. Thank you.